Okay. So maybe we'll give him one more minute before we do a call to order. Is that okay? Sure. Saw somebody named William Arnold in the newspaper this morning commenting on Caltrans matters. Is that right? Yeah, I wonder who that, well, maybe that's a relative or something. <laughs> yeah, probably evil twin brother or something like that. Chad, do we have county staff we need to move over? Yes, we should add Nolan and Eric when the time comes. Thanks. So while we're waiting, maybe I'll read the note here, which I uh, re always forget to read about participant staff and public will participate in this meeting via teleconference or otherwise electronically. This meeting is compliant with AB 361, which allows for a deviation of teleconference rules required by the Brown Act during a proclaimed state of emergency. Um, and then we have, a, well, when we get to the public comment, we have a, a way for, uh, for folks to, to give public comment. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a call to order and roll call. Uh, Supervisor Provenza? Here. Supervisor Saylor? Here. Oh, there's Will. Uh, Councilman Arnold? Here. Myself here. All right, so we are to a, a designated chair for the day, which has my name next to that on the agenda. So if people are okay, I will go ahead and chair this meeting unless I hear an objection. Somebody that really wants to chair this today. No, okay. There's, you know, always the hope. Um, okay, can I get an approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. All right. Supervisor Saylor? Aye. Supervisor Provenza? Aye. Council Member Arnold? Aye. Myself, aye. All right. So then we will move on to public comment. Is there any public comment? Uh, and this is for items that are not on the, uh, that are not on our agenda. Here's one hand raised. Okay. Okay, so, you're free to speak. Uh, hello, um, did you say, I'm sorry, did you say this was for items not on the agenda? Yes, this is just for general public comment. Ah, no, I'm waiting for an agenda item, so excuse me. Okay, thank you. All right, so. There's no other public comment. Great. So then we will uh, move on to our discussion items. And our first discussion item is uh, Pacifico update. And I see Nolan and uh, Nolan Sullivan and Kelly Stackowitz. Good morning. Uh, my name is Nolan Sullivan. I am the interim health and human services agency director. Um, Kelly, I think between you and I, we'll just kind of figure out how this goes and just kind of tag team it and kind of move forward. Um, for the last probably four or five months, the city of uh, Davis and the county of Yolo have been working on a joint lease for two of the buildings at Pacifico uh, with the express intent of leasing those or master lease uh, for the CalWORKs housing support program. And so we've been kind of working back and forth. We've been holding public meetings, kind of working through the draft lease process um, and really kind of getting to, to hopefully some point of finality. Um, the latest and greatest update is that the attorneys on both sides of the, the county and the city have, have made all of their major revisions to the draft lease. Uh, Kelly and I have taken probably a, at least a pretty thorough initial pass at adding kind of the program uh, details and program regulations. We've gotten to, to probably as close to a, a final draft lease as we're going to get. Um, I believe the county council team in Yolo County just sent that final draft uh, over to the city of Davis team yesterday. And so we expect to have a, a draft for, for prime time probably pretty quick here. Uh, last week, uh, Kelly and her team and myself and my team and the Yolo County housing team were able to meet on site. And we actually were able to walk through the building, start getting some schematics pulled together and start talking about renovations, remodels, all those bits and pieces. 
Uh, this morning, the superintendent of facility services for health and human services in Yolo County will be reaching out to the facility superintendent on the city side to start actually compiling lists of all the different facilities, upgrades, remodels, repair items that we have to do. Um, and that's pretty much where we're at today. So I, I did speak with Chad this morning really quickly about, you know, when do we anticipate this coming back to potentially council as well as the board? I think the next big step that we have is for the facilities folks to really kind of compile their list, get their quotes of all of the repairs, because that is included in the lease as well. Um, and so we're probably looking at, I would guess, maybe late May, maybe the last meeting in May to come to both council and the board. Um, and so at this point in time, you know, we're, we're very excited. We're very interested. We have our facilities folks kind of going through and, and kind of figuring out what it will take to actually stand up uh, this process. And that's probably the, the latest and greatest I have on the county side. Kel Kelly, what did I miss or, or, or what do you want to add to that? I think you covered it all. And unless there's specific questions that that kind of gives the lay of the land currently, um, we do feel like there has been forward progress made over the past um, you know, several weeks, couple months. And so we're looking forward to bringing this to both governing bodies. I see Jim has a question. I, I, yes, Nolan, uh, I'm not sure if I have that final uh, version. Uh, uh, County Council sent me something on Thursday or Friday. Is that the same as uh, what you're referring to as you know, the almost final version? There's a, a fresh copy in your inbox this morning for me, Jim. You'll see it uh, this morning. Oh, okay. Thank yep. you. Yep. Thank you very much. And I, I will review that today. Any other questions? Just brief. Oh. What, uh, what do you anticipate the time to be? Um, Nolan, meant, both of you mentioned coming to the board and council sometime soon or sometime, sometime. <laughs> I think we're hoping to get it to the board and the council. The, the last meetings in May is, is probably the tentative deadline. I'm guessing with construction timeframes, just the normal rate of purchasing for local government and hopefully, you know, not a whole lot of supply delays or delays for, for you know, remodel equipment. Um, I would guess occupancy will probably be sometime, uh, obviously probably next fiscal. You know, I, I think ideally we're hoping before the weather turns would, would be great. Um, but we're hoping to have a lease back uh, for review and, and finalization, hopefully by the end of May. Um, ideally, tentatively talking with Kevin, you know, really shooting for maybe September, October for a move in date. Um, and, and that's kind of what we're looking at uh, just based on where we're at today. Great. Thank you. Any, anything else? Will, did you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, you did, I have a question, you did a walkthrough and can you uh, please just share what your, uh, what your impression was of the walkthrough? Yeah, I, I think um, the buildings actually are uh, a little better structured to the needs that we had than we initially thought. I think the remodels that we originally scoped uh, are going to be far less in scope and scale. Um, the, the building actually was in pretty good shape. It's got good bones, if you will. Um, there was some water damage, but no significant mold damage on the interior. I know there is quite a bit of remediation work to be done on the exterior of the building that Kelly and the Davis team are working on. Um, but we were actually pretty excited on the inside. We pulled up some linoleum, pulled back some cabinet fixtures, and there was some uh, surface water damage, but there wasn't anything structural or any kind of any, any major red flags. So as our superintendent kind of walked through, um, we were pretty happy with the, the condition of the buildings. Obviously, we need a full... Uh, you know, fresh face. So we're talking new paint, uh, all new fixtures, new flooring, new lighting. So I mean, everything inside will probably be done new. But the good news is the bones are, are in pretty good shape and that the remodel that we my staff are requesting for program purposes will be fairly limited in scope. It's we're looking at maybe making one adjustment to the first floor in one building and maybe one adjustment to the second floor in the other building. Um, but we were pretty happy with uh, the actual layout and where everything kind of sits but we will need to fresh face pretty much everything inside. Um, but again, it, um, it all signs point to actually a, a pretty promising start. Uh, the exterior of the building, uh, you know, needs some work. And I think the city is, has a whole list of items they're working on for those bits and pieces. We were very happy with the site layout. We actually counted the parking spaces and came up with a great parking plan with Yolo County housing. We're feeling pretty comfortable with. Uh, we figured out a location where the security guard will be stationed right at the front of the building. I uh, found a great spot for the playground in the back. So I think all in all, it was a pretty promising walkthrough. And, and uh, I was a little nervous that as we you know started pulling back flooring and fixtures and things, 
we'd find some scary stuff, but our superintendent gave it a, uh, you know, not a, not a clean bill of health, but, you know, far better than it could have been. So we're, we're, uh, we're pretty happy with the current condition. Uh, Kelly, I don't know if you have anything to add from the city side, but I thought it was pretty, a pretty good walkthrough. It, it was, it was good to have the general services and related folks there. Um, I don't believe that that team had had the opportunity previously to go through the buildings and see what, um, you know, what they were dealing with. We do think based on the inspection reports that the city has done over the past year, that we do have some work to do on those buildings to make them, um, you know, like new. Um, but as as Nolan said, the, it seems that the, the overall structure works well for the program that uh, the county is proposing. Thank you. I see Jim has another question and then we'll go to public comment. Yes, thank you. Uh, were you able to then address the, the, uh, the issue with the water and also with the mold remediation? So the, the mold remediation, um, is ba that's based on one of the, the reports that or the inspections that we have done over the past year. And also um, originally why I believe the city closed the, those two buildings to begin with. So that's not something that is easily seen. Those are done more by air samples and samples of the walls and things like that. Um, so we, the city knows that we need, that's first on our list, we need to get that addressed before the um, more cosmetic changes can take place. And then, uh, thank you. And then one other question I had, I, I know that the, uh, there was reference to a well in, in, the, uh, uh, in the report uh, regarding uh, conditions. And I, I'm wondering, I, I'm assuming that Pacifico is connected to the city's water uh, and, and I'm wondering what the well was for and how that relates. Yeah, I'm not sure what the reference to the well is, but the um, Pacifico is connected to both city water and sewer. Um, so. Okay, and uh, yeah, if you could find out, I'm just uh, concerned, I'm interested in, in finding out what, what, what the well reference was and how that might affect things. Sure. Thank you. Okay, if there's not any uh, further questions, I'm going to move to public comment. Christina, do you see any public commenters for this item? I do not see any hands raised. Oh, wait, there is one now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, the there. caller, you yep. can speak now. Sorry. Yeah, I had to unmute. Sorry about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so my name is Bridge Ferguson, and I live. Uh, on Evergreen Court adjacent to the Pacifico complex. And uh, it won't be a surprise to you to know that I'm calling to uh, oppose the proposal to uh, cite an additional homeless, 50 additional, up to 50 additional homeless people at the site, um, in addition to the 50 or so uh, beds that are available there now. I think um, many of us feel that a 100 bed homeless shelter uh, on that site adjacent to the Poudre Creek Trail, adjacent to a single family neighborhood is just not appropriate um, for that site. Uh, it's not consistent with the zoning. It's not, um, it's not appropriate. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, what we would encourage is that you consider, the city consider, not the county, but the city consider uh, tearing down those buildings and uh, replacing them uh, with, uh, if need, if, if it would be for affordable housing, be a relatively small number of permanent uh, affordable housing units on that site, more consistent with the immediate adjacent area, not mixing children and families in with the existing uh, mix of, of people who live there with all the problems that they have, um, and uh, uh, something that's a little more consistent with with, uh, with with the neighborhood around there. So that's that's the concern. It sounds like you guys are not listening to us anyway and are moving forward. But um, I do wanna say that we really think it's not consistent with the zoning, it's not consistent. Uh, there was no EIR done to assess this type of facility there uh, and really it should be reconsidered. Thank you. Thank you uh, to the commenter and um, I, I will note that there was, it, you know, there's still a lot of conversation that has to happen here uh, when it comes to council, when it comes to the um, county, and uh, if there are concerns or um, uh, ideas that people would like to put forward, we will, you know, definitely have opportunity to have 
those conversations. Uh, anything else from um, Will or the supervisors? Okay, uh, so then we will move on to 5B, which is the update on Paul's place. I'll just make a, a quick update on this. The county has finalized its contracts, which I think the last time we talked, we had made an allocation of funding to uh, match the city's contributions to Paul's Place. So we have finalized our agreements with the uh, Paul's Place, uh, Davis Community Meals and Housing. And uh, so we are operating under that contract. They are beginning to uh, submit reimbursements and we'll be getting progress reports from them as they progress. Um, on their construction plan. And we'll give uh, updates to our respective board, uh, but I don't know if there is any additional interest um, as that project is being conducted by Davis Community Meals and Housing and they're, they're required under agreement to do periodic updates. Don? I think it would be, thanks Chad. I think it would be good in a couple of months to maybe have some, some of the folks involved with the project uh, come to one of these two by twos and give us their the status of their construction and timeline and and so on just so that we're all tracking but i am so impressed with the partnership that we have on this on this project between the city and the county and the and private funders and others and it's we, we've actually used it as and as an example of how we should be pursuing and considering project proposals and funding requests under the under the arp uh, uh, Ab Avenue, uh, when we've heard from other jurisdictions. And another one that I was really, I'm really excited about is in the Woodland, they've got a, a Boys and Girls Club is being started up in the city of Woodland and Yolo County together. Uh, and over the, over the past eight days, uh, have both come to a, a shared contribution of $700,000 a piece to, oper to, to begin the operations of that facility right in the heart of one of the areas in Woodland that has the highest number of police responses uh, and really, really very important. So, this, so I think Paul's Place kind of opened up a lot of our eyes about ways that we can, we can, we can uh, think outside the box and, and uh, help each other, help each other, help our community. I might add that at the same time we uh, we uh, shared on uh, Paul's place. We also joined City of West Sacramento in uh, in uh, both the joint jointly funding a uh, safe streets program and, and uh, homeless program in West Sacramento. And same the same kind of a model with the crisis nursery, where the City of Davis stepped up. Uh, and, uh, and Yolo County did as well. And we're, we're uh, hoping we can see uh, some additional partnerships there. But this is all made possible by, by uh, the current federal administration's investments in rebuilding better in our communities through, uh, through the American Rescue Program and the CARES Act uh, resources that we, that we can uh, deploy in the benefit of our communities. So it's really really impressive the kinds of investments we're able to make. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, comments. And I'm uh, also pleased and excited to see this. Uh, hopefully, you know, th these partnerships can continue and we can continue to be creative around how we uh, get things done, even when, you know, we don't have this you know, sort of abundance of, of resources, because that's when it when it gets a little more challenging. Um, but I think that, you know, you, you know, you're right in that this has, um, you know, just sort of set the precedent for for working cooperatively and finding ways to to get these projects done. Um, is there any public comment on this item? There's one raised hand, uh, Martha Teeter. Go ahead, Martha. Well, I just want to uh, support uh, this culmination of a dream that Davis Opportunity Village and Paul's Place had for uh, building, uh, and Davis Community Meals and Housing had for building a tiny house village here. And um, 
thank the city and county for supporting that vision um, and hopefully not losing sight that, that we are still desperately in need of affordable housing um, for this, um, this population of very low income, very uh, exposed people. But I wanted to con uh, contribute my thanks for your efforts. Thank you, Martha. Um, anyone else? Do we have any other commenters? Okay. No, no uh, one. All right. So then I will uh, bring it back. And if there's any other thoughts that people had while people were commenting or forgot to mention, I will um, uh, take those. Will? I'll just very briefly uh, echo what uh, um, uh, Supervisor Saylor said, uh, and thanks to our federal partners and uh, and the administration for its um, approval of uh, of these rescue funds, uh, which have allowed us to do several um, fantastic things for our community. But uh, um, Paul's place being one of the key highlights uh, that we were able to support uh, with that, and um, and that'll benefit our uh, communities for decades to come. I agree, Jim. I know this uh, American Rescue Act is on the agenda later, but uh, while we're talking about it, one of the things that our board has decided to do, uh, you know, apart from the reports that we have to do, do a letter uh, to the president and to our congressional delegation, uh, well, thanking them for the funds, but mostly telling them what we did with the money, because uh, it, it really was unprecedented. Uh, never since I've been on the board has, has there been that amount of money to spend uh, on, on people that really need it, on, on the vulnerable people, uh, in this case, uh, affected uh, by the pandemic. And, and I think both the city and county have made very good use of those funds and we should let them know because uh, I think when they're considering similar actions in the future, they should have this information at their fingertip. So I, I would urge the city to, to maybe uh, consider if you haven't already doing something similar. Agreed. Okay, um, so with that, I think we are on to homeless, uh, city and county homeless update. We got uh, Ian and Deanne. Yeah, I think also just a, by way of brief introduction, I know we have a pretty ambitious agenda today. So um, I think we can probably keep our remarks at a fairly high level. I know uh, we are at the city level are pursuing uh, pulling together our proposal to present to the county for a portion of the ARP, speaking of ARP funds, a portion of the ARP funds that the county I know had has currently set aside for assisting uh, our, the uh, local cities with some of these uh, the homeless endeavors. Uh, so uh, I know that's something that we're working on. Deanne can certainly elaborate on that or speak to it as <laughs> appropriate here uh, as, as desired. Uh, there's a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, on the subject of, of uh, uh, homelessness and uh, bringing uh, resources to bear to uh, create a better place for that situation all around. So uh, just by way of that introduction, uh, Mayor Partita, uh, Chair Partita, um, I'll offer that you know, Deanne is here to elaborate on any of those endeavors as you might like. And I know Ian, uh, Chad, you and Ian may have additional insights here. Yeah, so um, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I can begin, I, something I really want to share and to Supervisor Saylor's point around collaboration, um, something that we're quite proud of and we've been working with the county on um, in that they've given us this wonderful opportunity for extra funding is our winter shelter, which has kind of turned into a spring shelter at the moment. So right now we're, we're currently quite exclusively administering that, that shelter. And we've recently accepted approximately $53,000 in additional ESG funding, um, which has allowed us to extend our winter shelter, which was supposed to end around mid-March into May. Um, so it allowed us to extend the shelter an additional 11 weeks. So we are very, very grateful um, to the county for the opportunity for this extra funding. And as a reminder, we 
we began this program as a pivot to the closure of our migrant center shelter model. Um, and uh, we will be producing um, a whole litany of outcomes related to this program. But I'm, I'm really happy to share at this present moment that the shelter has actually housed temporarily 60 plus individual people, so distinct humans, um, since we've opened it. Um, two people have actually entered into drug rehab. Two people have found permanent jobs and two people are on their way to permanent housing. So we're really, really excited about those outcomes. And then in addition, we're really excited about the collaboration that we've had with our local faith-based organizations who were such a big part of making this possible in addition to this funding. Um, they, they stepped up, they privately funded and fundraised to, to help shelter folks. And Communicare also uh, was a big part of the story as well. They, they actually have come to our shelter location weekly to provide um, acute care to our clients. And that has looked like everything from you know a simple like knee injection to suboxone to prenatal care so we're just we're really really proud of this program um, and like I said it will close uh, mid-May and at that time we'll have a full report on all the outcomes so from the Davis side we're really happy to bring this um, today to this meeting thank you I'll, I'll just briefly add some stuff that was covered at the um commission meeting last week in terms of the county funding. There's a, another grant, uh, half round three funding, uh, that application is due um, in June. And so we're partnering with um, the Commission to Address Homelessness and HPAC and key partners on um, working on kind of updating and revamping our 2019 plan to address homelessness as part of that application. But there's also um, over $900,000 um, coming in that. And so uh, at the commission, we we presented some ideas that we have heard from um, different programs or different jurisdictions about some needs and also uh, thinking of ways that we can enhance some of our current supports. And so um, one of the pieces was a placeholder for $300,000 in funding um, next year for the emergency shelter out at East Beamer Way. Um, they, you know, as, as I'm sure you all know, they operate largely on grant funding currently um, in, to keep that operation in place. And so they are constantly kind of in this, you know, grant by grant cycle. This is their next opportunity to, to make sure those services um, stay intact and, and are as robust as they are currently. Um, the idea is that the 300,000 from the county's uh, HAP allocation would be um, hopefully matched um, through the competitive process that HPAC, the COC takes with 300,000 as well. And that would give them two years of funding to uh, build an on-ramp to their cal -AIM housing um, and homeless um, funding source and kind of program that they're looking to ramp up and that would allow them more sustainable funding in the future. Um, the other piece that we have looked at is, you know, we have the mobile medicine team support that's in the community that Communicare operates that was critical, you know, during Project Room Key and is continuing in a larger fashion for the next couple of years with the funding and and ongoing past that. Um, one, of the, one of the programs that's been in West Sacramento is this program called Show Up Sacramento. Um, and it's a, it's a shower program that has uh, clothing for folks that allows them to come in and shower and get clean clothes. It also enters them into our homeless system so that they're eligible for future housing opportunities that become available. Um, it provides some hygiene kits and some, kind of some of those quick things to walk away with to have them be a little more stable than than they showed up to. It's not just a shower. Um, and so we are proposing to use uh, around $200,000 for a similar program, but to bring it countywide and ideally partner it with the mobile medicine support team that goes and is in each community on certain days um, and goes out to um, encampments and does outreach. And so in addition to getting wound care, getting connection, getting a peer, getting navigated into behavioral health treatment, the individuals would also have the opportunity to you know, get, um, take a shower, get some clean clothes, um, get some hygiene kits and, and be better off as they're, um, you know, coming out of that service. Um, one of the other <clears throat> potential placeholders is, uh, would be $5,000 for a pilot um, for a, a program called Clip Dart, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. They did a um, fair last Halloween. Um, it's a new nonprofit that 
you know, is really invested in, in this community um, and is uh, um, about bringing those that uh, basically barbers on demand essentially is kind of what they, um, what their tagline is, but it's really about encouraging the, the mental health and behavioral health needs of those that they're bringing the service to. Um, and so the idea, they think they could do several hundred um, haircuts in a year with that $5,000. And so the idea would be to also partner them um, ideally with this uh, shower support team and with the mobile medicine team so that we're, you know, meeting people where they're at and getting them in a place where, you know, they feel better about themselves or more confident. They, if they're going in for a job interview, they have a place to shower, they have a nice haircut and a shave and, you know, are better suited, have clean clothes to go into that job interview or, or go uh, meet with a, you know, a landlord to get a housing placement. So trying to look at that front end of the system and wrap supports around where we can there. Um, we also have a potential placeholder. Um, the city and county have been partnering on an apartment um, program with Hope Cooperative as the organization operating that. And so um, talking with the landlord and seeing if there's interest to continue that into July of 2023. Um, and if so, using some of that hat free funding to potentially match some city funding to keep that in operation and allow folks a longer um, off ramp into permanent housing for the folks that are per currently in there, um, especially knowing we've got uh, 60 new permanent supportive housing units coming on online at East Beamer Way um, in the next several months. So uh, I would that. just want to add, oh, sorry, excuse me. Go ahead. No, nope, you're good. Okay. I just wanted to add one thing um, uh, to bookend what um, Ian has said here is that we just um, today, in fact, got an email, I think from somebody um, in Ian's shop around um, reinstituting our MDT, which is a multidisciplinary team process that we will be doing between the city. It will involve actually all of the players, but the city and the county. And the reason why I, I bring this up is because it's yet another example of collaboration between the city and the county. Um, and what these meetings are designed to do is actually help us work um, smarter and not harder. And it's actually a totally low cost solution um, to some of the issues that we face when we're working with the same clients across multiple jurisdictions. And so, as you can imagine, we can often, between all of the um, client care pr programs and, and folks involved, you know, seven to eight different programs can be working with the same person. And sometimes we undo each other's efforts, right? Um, and so the purpose of the MDT meetings is to get everybody into the same room to kind of rank order our highest utilizers of services and to work smarter about you know, case managing those folks. And we took a break from doing those meetings when COVID hit. And I'm just really excited to, to hear and see that they're going to be returning because I think this really helps us streamline our efforts, which of course um, equals cost savings and it's better for the client. So um, that is actually really big news to share today. Yeah, thanks. I forgot that, that important detail. Um, I also just wanted to add to the mobile medicine piece. Uh, they are um, have started actually this week going out to the migrant centers. Um, as we know, you know it's it's that season and, and providing uh, great support for folks um, in both the ones that are physically lo located in, in Yolo County here, but also the Dixon one that Yolo County Housing supports um, because the workers you know move from location to location, um, and you know we wanted to support all three of those locations. And so we're really excited to have that you know program and that be a part of that support. Um, I also imagine that the point in time count is probably on folks' mind, and um, so the report is due to HUD uh, at the end of April, and so our teams are, um, my team is coordinating with all the leads in each jurisdiction um, diligently and, you know, uh, spending lots of hours on finalizing that, double-checking the data, um, and making sure that we're capturing everything accurately. We'll have that submitted before the deadline. And uh, we do a local report that gives a little more detail and talks about kind of some of the nuances of, you know, what worked well, what didn't work well, what do we want to see improve next time. And so in May, we'll work on that local report, um, get it out to HPAC and get it out to the leads in each community to review and make sure we capture everything appropriately. And then um, it, it'll be posted on our website like the previous reports have been. So, yeah, thank you for that. It sounds like there's a lot of... Uh of really great things that are happening in, 
maybe we can schedule a separate meeting where we can kind of dive into this a little more because I, I hate to, uh, you know, cut it off. We've got such a long um, agenda today, but I definitely would love to hear what the update on the point and count. And at that point, I imagine we'll be transitioning and looking, um, you know, that's about the time that we should really be looking into what we're going to do for next winter, even though it's, you know, the weather is getting better uh, at that, uh, you know, at that juncture. Um, are there any questions on this subject, Jim? Well, yeah, thank you for the report and, and uh, all, all the uh, progress we've been making. And I'm really happy to hear about the multidisciplinary teams. Uh, uh, being reinstituted because that really does make the service more effective and helpful. Um, I, I'm wondering, and I, I think it's great that uh, you know, you're extending the winter shelter to the to the spring. And uh, I wonder, is it is it the you know maybe the goal to have that shelter be year round? Assuming funding, and I know that's a big issue. <laughs> There has certainly been discussion about a year-round shelter option um, at the subcommittee level. Um, so we, we haven't crystallized on anything um, yet, of course, um, but it's certainly come up. Thanks. Well, I, I agree, Gloria, on a, on a single meeting where we discuss homelessness because there's so much going on. I think that would be helpful. Great. Does anybody else have any questions? And so, um, because if if people are okay, I think I'm going to switch up a little bit and have us go through all the rest of the items and then take public comment at the end, just to uh, try to get us through all of these uh, items a little more quickly, if that's okay. People are okay with that? Yeah. Okay, great. American Rescue Plan is next. Well, I'll, I'll jump into to this one and. Uh, the county did have an ARP item on our agenda yesterday, and I think uh, Eric Will, our ARP manager, might be on the line too if there's anything to add. But uh, the county board was taking a look at our remaining ARP funds. We had reserved a certain amount of funding when we started this process, uh, not knowing where it would lead in some of the projects that we uh, would want to fund as we got toward the end of it. The board did take action on a, a number of projects yesterday, including uh, some that were mentioned already, including the Boys and Girls Club in partnership with the City of Woodland. We also funded a contribution to the City of Sacramento uh, for City of West Sacramento for a parks project that they're doing in one of their low income neighborhoods and at, for the Bright Park. And then we did provide a contribution as well for uh, the Crisis Nursery. And then the board also did contribute to a, a project in partnership with YOLO Housing that will be transitioning one of their public housing projects uh, from, a, from a public housing project to a voucher-based property and will do uh, improvement and uh, expand affordable housing um, in Woodland as well. And so there's a number of actions that the board took yesterday. Uh, they did also provide some direction to staff and we're getting down to where we have a limited amount of funds left and a lot of ideas still and directed our staff to kind of craft what that closeout plan might look at like uh, and bring that back in a, in a few meetings uh, for the board's consideration. So we are getting toward the end of it, uh, but we've made a lot of valuable investments along the way. Eric, did I miss anything that we should be highlighting? Uh, just one thing is the mini grants program. So that closed out uh, on the 31st. And so just a quick reminder, that's that was $250,000 that was set aside uh, uh, divided evenly between the five districts. So we are going through those applications right now. County staff received 136 applications totaling over $1.4 million in requests. So quite a considerable amount of requests for money for a much smaller pot. Uh, and so we are meeting with each of the supervisors to discuss their individual, the applications for their district. And then we also have, I think, about 22 applications that were considered countywide applications as well. So over the following couple of months, we plan to discuss with each of the supervisors with the idea that we could return to the board. I think we're looking at May right now, once we've met with all the supervisors to get that approved and move forward with contracts. All right, thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, just for a brief update, uh, Chair Partita, um, in, in nothing really particularly new to report since we last met regarding the city ARP fund process. We are now moving towards our implementation phase of uh, getting agreements and contracts and, and various 
checks cut and so forth. So various uh, organizations and efforts. Uh, Chad mentioned earlier the Paul's Place Agreement being in place. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, and then also um, I mentioned earlier, uh, so just to reinforce on this, that we will be submitting to the county um, our requests, you know, if you will, for the county's consideration. Uh, for a, a share or a component of uh, some of the uh, homelessness uh, specific ARP funds that the county had set aside um, uh, and that the county is requesting, of course, proposals from uh, from the city on. So that will be forthcoming uh, by the end of the month here. Uh, so the, otherwise, nothing new to report, uh, but uh, really appreciate all the partnership on this. And it's really great to be moving to this implementation phase, to be sure. So. Yeah, that is, that is great. That's the that's where the you know rubber meets the road, right? Things start to happen. Um, that's uh, wonderful. Uh, any other questions or comments on this item? If not. We'll move to the next. Uh, I think we passed one. There you go. The North Davis Water Interconnect. Yeah, just very briefly, I can provide a brief update on this. Um, so the North Davis Water Interconnect uh, project, uh, for those who aren't familiar, is basically connecting in North Davis, uh, uh, a segment of that's uh, uh, neighborhood within the county to the city's uh, water system uh, because of challenges with potable water supply issues in that in that area. Uh, that have uh, you know long in the making this this project uh, we're getting to the I think the final throws now of agreements and so forth to advance it forward at last week's city council meeting the city council authorized um, uh, basically utilizing uh, what we refer to as one and a half inch water meters uh, to be um, to be the connected up with those households uh, but charging a one inch um, connection fee uh, rate for that. Uh, primarily because just the reason for the larger meter is more about a uh, to ensure that there's adequate flow for water in the event that uh, there's concurrent water use happening with uh, the automatic fire sprinklers in those homes. And it's, it's the, otherwise the one and a half inch meter isn't necessary for day to day household use. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that the, the flows would be adequate to serve those homes with the fire sprinkler systems. Uh, and therefore not unnecessarily charge, you know, a larger uh, connection fee for that. So that uh, agreement, if you will, was authorized by the city council last week. Our staff is following up with county staff on the next phases of implementation. Uh, we are currently exploring, and I think we should, if we don't already have, we should have very soon. Um, our key staff member on this is back today, this afternoon, Stan Gritzko. Uh, from being out for a few days. Um, uh, the last remaining question I think that we're trying to resolve is for the ongoing monthly rates uh, for those is there's a base fee for the water rate and the base fee is some is slightly higher for the one and a half inch meters than it is for the one inch meters. And so we are uh, exploring that question of is it possible to still to also charge the one inch base fee for the monthly rates uh, for the water bills? Um, still using the one and a half inch meters. So as soon as we do have clarity on that from legal counsel, it's a Prop 218 question. So as soon as we do have clarity on that from legal counsel, we will be circling back with the county team on that. Wow, okay, that's that's great. Thank you for that update. Are there any questions on this? Uh, I have a, a comment, so if I could. Sure. So thanks, Mike, that's very, very well received news and thanks to the council members for your support for moving this forward. We continue to work with the with the, uh, the state on a grant that is a, a really key piece of bringing this uh, this all to fruition this year. So you might be just be alerted that, that there's some some ongoing conversations on some of the details there that we need to work out. Okay. Uh, thank yeah, you. And how, and how, Don, however, we can be supportive in that effort. We certainly want to be, and that's you know, certainly our commitment, and uh, we'll make sure we're in good communication on that. Thank you. And of course, part of it is the, the construction cost escalation with the supply issues and the labor, uh, the competitive nature of, of construction these days. So that, that makes it even more critically important that this grant be a part of the, 
of the package. Makes sense. So thanks, Mike. We'll be in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if there's not any other questions or comments, we'll move to item F, which is uh, youth initiatives. This is an item that I think I added a, a couple meetings ago on the long-term uh, planning calendar. And so the county has been engaged with the Owo County Office of Education on the formation of a youth commission. We are working through the details of uh, the composition of that, but uh, in our budget in September, we did include $400,000 that would be a county funding contribution to that from our cannabis funding. Uh, part of our cannabis tax uh, is tied to providing uh, services to youth. And so the uh, Yolo County Office of Education is providing the staffing uh, to lift that up, but that would take uh, youth from various high schools and various uh, cities and districts throughout our county as part of this youth commission and provide them uh, with some training and some funding that would allow them to make impactful investments in our community. And so we are hoping to finalize the, the details of that with uh, the County Office of Education uh, shortly and so that we can work to get uh, that youth commission uh, up and running. I know Supervisor Saylor is our, one of our board liaisons to that. I'd be curious if he has any more uh, perspective they'd like to add on that topic. Just, uh, just a couple dimensions. The, the city of Davis has, as you know, all of you, the chapter 10 of the general plan is the youth and education chapter. Very unusual for a city's general plan to have that kind of detail on, uh, on the, role of, the role of children and youth in our community and, and, the, and how we value it and how we wanna continue to nurture and sustain uh, positive, uh, positive you know, aging at that in those early years. Uh, so the idea of the youth commission is that we often talk about, let's have kids, let, why aren't there any young people at our table? Why aren't we listening to them? But, but when we bring them in, we typically ask them to give us a recommendation or tell us their, their stories and we pat them on their head and send them on their way. And so this is a different situation. Here we're actually giving them, we're empowering them to make decisions about what should happen in youth development in our county. And so we, we're, we're providing a resource for that group to make decisions on, to make investments. And they, they, these, uh, this will be guided carefully by the Martin Luther King Foundation leadership training. Uh, this is a Barbara Lee creation of Oak, city of Oakland is, uh, is its home and Garth Lewis, our county office, our county superintendent of education has the connection with that and they are funding a portion of the administrative cost uh, for this as well as providing leadership uh, training. So the, the 15 members of the commission will, will at, at, at one time, it'll be 15 at one time. So you have a cohort come in, they're going to be substantially uh, empowered and strengthened in their ability. But the process and the conversation about how do we find those folks? How do, where do, how do we make sure that, the, that young people from across the county's geography and across the county's diversity are represented there? Uh, that conversation in itself will be a powerful, uh, a powerful conversation for our county. And the fact that the proposals that they will be entertaining will come from each of the communities, we hope, and we hope that the, that the community development of those proposals for funding, that also is going to amplify the, the voice and the power of young people in our county. I couldn't be more excited. I'm, we've got details that we've got to work out, It'll, and I'm hopeful that that'll all come together pretty soon. And as it does, you all will be invited to participate in a variety of ways, in, in, including uh, we're, we're hoping a YOLO leader session in the fall uh, that'll be a, a youth, youth development focused YOLO leaders talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Hey, uh, Chair Partee, I'll just add very briefly that um, one of the key functions of the new department that we're forming of housing and social services will be and is a charge specifically from our council uh, to help develop uh, youth um, 
basically youth initiatives uh, for the city of Davis. And so um, nothing, now that said, the, for, the department is obviously in formation right now. And so it's not up and running. So that, that shouldn't preclude conversations from happening now. It yeah. should be happening now in partnership, but moving forward to just a, a quick note that that will, our organizational structure will be, I think, better set up to be a bit more engaged and more proactive in this area. Um, and again, at the, at the council's, uh, with the council's leadership on that. So just a, more to come on that in terms of the formation of the department. Cool. That might Is be that a fun, uh, fun update at some point. Uh, it, this is one of the areas actually that I'm very interested in and very excited that the county is uh, taking that uh, that leadership and uh, is is forming a, a place in the space where these energies can can happen and hopefully ripple out. Um, it, I agree that the conversations around you know who shows up in those spaces is an important one, and uh, it's, you know so you don't get you know the same folks that show up in all the spaces, even the youth spaces that, you know, to be the same. Um, it, that's, that's really important it, is making sure that uh, we increase the diversity and not just diversity of, you know, identity, but diversity of, of, of uh, places that people come from. I think that, that that's an important one. And, you know, this will shape you know, the, the efforts that we put into these areas will shape uh, our, entire, our entire communities for a, a very long time. And so this is a great investment. Um, so with that, I think we've gotten to the end of our items and we'll open up for, uh, before we do the long range calendar, we'll uh, take some public comment. Do you see any commenters? You don't see any hands raised. You do not see any hands raised? No. Oh, there's one now. One moment. Oh, they disappeared. So no, no public comment. <laughs> okay. Um, so then it, it, we will move on to the long range. Jim? Oh, well, we, we already talked about setting uh, uh, homelessness as a uh, one meeting topic, and I th I, we should probably get that on the long range calendar. Yes, yeah, that is, that is one. I think that we should have a, um, you know, a richer conversation around that area, and especially since the, it sounds like the point and counts will be finalized this month. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. And I, so and I would be interested to, you know, We've got our, our respite center and we've got all of these efforts. And um, I, I'm just curious about, you know, what we think the progress, it, you know, what type of progress we're seeing uh, because of the efforts, if, if there is a way that we can maybe uh, have a conversation around that and uh, get some information on what we know so far. Oh, that would be good, and it would be good if we could have a joint staff report, or uh, I, I don't want to create too much work, but something that would summarize the efforts and results so that when we jump into the discussion, we don't have to spend too much time re-educating ourselves because there's so much going on at one time. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep track. Right. Uh, any, anything else? Yes, I think there was a mention, Mike, Mike talked about your new city department. I think it might be interesting to have an update on or kind of the shape of that, what you want to, what you, what your intention is. And it sounds like there could well be some new opportunities for partnership between the Good city idea. and that department, between the county and that department. Yeah, and there absolutely are the, a lot of the fundamentals of the department formation are built on principles of um, partnership and leveraging and, and so forth to be sure. So be happy to do that. Okay. And then I think we also have climate on our long range at some point. And yeah. one, of, one of the topics of the green procurement, uh, our teams are working together on that. And I, I suspect in a couple of months, bringing that back would be good. Okay. And maybe if we do that, we could have a report from 
both the city and the county's uh, climate commissions, or I don't know if you call yours climate commission, but uh, uh, what the activities are and maybe talk about how to, how to coordinate. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, I think that uh, that those are some uh, good uh, items to to get um, started with. I also know that, and I don't know if this is appropriate for this uh, two by two, but the uh, we have our uh, town and gown that's coming up. It sounds like that won't happen until the fall, though. But we do have that MOU with UC Davis, and this might be a good place to sort of um, you know have a, a report out on that. Didn't we have a that was think, the county? Didn't we have a requirement that we meet with the university, city, and county once a year to uh, review that uh, MOU and progress on it? I, I I think we did agree to that, and I know we did a, did it a couple times, but that may have fallen off during the pandemic. Yeah, that's right. That's a part of our process. Yeah, we are. We're actively working with uh, uh, with the chancellor's office on getting a date uh, a date scheduled oh, okay. for the fall uh, for when for when the students are back. Uh, in particular, we wanted to make sure we did it during a time when students were in session and, and so forth, which makes a lot of Very sense. Good. And as part of that town gown annual town gown meeting with city, county, university, uh, would be that report out on progress on on each of the key MOU items. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think so that that. So the town gown that refers to the three-party gathering, is what you're saying. That's correct, though. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. You need to come up with a different term. So, you know, city, county, right. gown. <laughs> and if the chancellor yeah. wants to serve dinner, I won't object. <laughs> One of the absolute best uh, presentations I've ever seen was city manager. Then, well, I guess it was uh, John Meyer when he was on campus. Uh, on town town gown uh, collab collaboration, it was uh, it was quite comical and insightful. All right, okay. Um, do we have any public comment on long range? No. Okay. Any who's, any who's final this, comments? Who's this William Arnold who comments in the Sacramento Bee? Does anybody know who that is? Uh, he's a um, spokesperson for the California Department of Transportation. I, I don't know much about the guy other than I've heard he's incredibly handsome and charming. <laughs> <laughs> there, Partita, it well, looks like we have one We have one hand raised. It would just went up right at, at the, okay. the All edge right. of, of your request there. Uh, for Maybe Paul. they're commenting on this William Arnold. <laughs> Martha Teeter. No, no, on the uh, session on homelessness, that um, it would be really helpful to hear the challenges from the county and the state, as well as the opportunities as strategic uh, in a strategic manner in terms of a longer range plan and where we are and what, you know, what we can do now and how it will contribute to the future. Um, we've heard a lot of wonderful progress recently, but we know it takes a long time and changes of heart, which hopefully we can work toward. Thank you. Oh, and also possibly to involve some of the ombudsman organization like Davis Homelessness Alliance in this, which had a big part in helping the private pay emergency shelter and motels work this last week, uh, this last uh, winter. <clears throat> thank you. All right, thank you for your comment. Um, are there any final uh, comments from the um, city or the or the county? I think that's we're on item six. No. All right. If not, um, our next. Uh, meeting is May 11th, and we are at adjournment. Uh, Mayor Partita, if sorry, I, I should have brought this up just a moment ago. I wasn't quick enough on my unmute trigger here. I will. Uh, I will. Un I will unadjourn. <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to very just briefly just introduce uh, for those who have not yet met Jenny Jenny Tan as our uh, communications director for communications uh, with the city. 
and uh, she's uh, just <laughs> wrapping up her first uh, uh, couple weeks on the job here. So we welcome Jenny. Uh, I know many of you know Jenny from uh, prior roles uh, within the county and uh, fantastic to have her on the team. And uh, thank you for joining us today, Jenny. Appreciate it. That's all. Welcome. Thank you. Great. Okay. So then I will re-adjourn this meeting. Good Thank job. You. One hour. <laughs> All right. Good job. Thank you. Bye.